previously, as according to what you've already said regarding the history of fasting, uh, Muslims were commanded to fast for three days and then one month. Is this an indication of a contradiction in the Quran? Actually, there's no contradiction in the Quran. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nisa, chapter number four, verse number two. Do they not consider the Quran with care? Do they not ponder over the Quran with care? Had it been from anyone besides Allah, there would have been many contradictions. So no two verses of the Quran will ever contradict. But there's something like abrogation, which people differ. According to me, abrogation doesn't mean contradiction. Abrogation means the verses that were revealed later, as Allah says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number two. Verse number 106. We do not cause any of the verse or ayats of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be forgotten. But we replace it with something similar or better. So many a times when things that were prohibited or things that were made compulsory, they came in stages. Not that it was difficult or made easy. Sometimes things difficult were made easy. Sometimes things initially were made easy. So people get used to it and then difficult. For example, regarding prohibition of alcohol. The first verse to be revealed was Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse number 219, which says that in alcohol, in intoxicants, is profit and loss. Loss is more than profit. It didn't say it was haram. Only gave a guidance that loss is more than profit. Then Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 43, says that when you're intoxicated, don't offer salah. It didn't say that if you're not offering salah, you can have intoxicants. If that what was mentioned, then there's a problem. It only said... Do not be intoxicated while offering salah. And since the Muslims have to offer five times salah, that means having alcohol, intoxicants in the morning without other question. Maybe in the evening if you had, by the time you get up in the morning, you become sober. The final prohibition came in Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse number 90. Ya ayyu al-lathina amunu, O you believe, innam al-khamru al-maisuru, most certainly intoxicants and gambling. Well, ansabu al-aslamu, dedication of stones, divination of arrows, rishtum min amili shaitan, these are Satan's handiwork. First, abstain from this handiwork that may prosper. So here we come to know that the ban, the prohibition on having intoxicants, alcohol, came in stages. It was easy first, only gave a guidance that it's more evil than good. Then, while praying, don't have intoxicants, then final ban came. So similarly, for fasting, no two verses of the Quran contradict. Though there are some people who say, oh, no, the Quran, now that verse did not be followed. I disagree with that. Abrogation doesn't mean a contradiction. Abrogation means the last verse of Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse 790, includes the first two verses. If it's banned overall, it's even banned while offering salah. So same way here, if you read Surah Bakra, chapter 2, verse 83, when it was said fasting is compulsory, it did not specify the time three days. That we get from other sources. The Quran doesn't specify. It only says fasting is fard. Then it says in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 85, that you have to fast for the full month of Ramadan. So, what was mentioned about three days every month, fasting, was actually from other sources. If it was mentioned in the Quran that you have to fast for three days, and then it says after that fast for full month, then there's a contradiction. Furthermore, previously, it was said, again, in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 184, that you have to fast, but those who cannot fast or those who can fast with difficulties, they have two options. Either fast or feed a person who's poor, who's indigent. So that time, it was not fard. If it's difficult for you to fast, yet you can fast or you can feed a poor person, but fasting is better, but not fard. Now this was for general. But afterwards, when the verse of Surah Baqarah chapter 2, verse 85 was revealed, then it became fard for everyone. Now, this verse refers to those people who are ill, terminally ill, or they're very elderly people. That means mentally they are fine, but physically they cannot fast in their life. So if you're ill, terminally ill means ill for a long period and your health may not get fine. Or if you're so elderly which you cannot fast and every year you'll keep on getting more and more old. So here it says, if you can fast with difficulty, fine. Otherwise, feed someone indigent, a poor person. Similarly, as far as having sexual intercourse, previously the rule was you should not have sexual intercourse in the full month of Ramadan, whether day or night. But this is not mentioned in the Quran. 
The Quran only says fast in the month of Ramadan. This we get from the other sources. The Quran is not contradicting. It is actually first fasting three days was in fact easier. Then fast, if it's difficult, if you don't want to fast, don't fast. Feed a poor person. So it was easier initially. Then later on it became difficult. As far as the approaching your wife, initially it was difficult. That you cannot approach the full month. And then Allah made it easy. So no two verses of the Quran contradict. But because the Quran was revealed in a span of 22 and a half years, so many things that were prohibited came one shot immediately or it came in stages. Many things which were fard came immediately or came in stages. So fasting, because initially it was difficult for the people, it came in stages. But Alhamdulillah, with all these things, no two verses of the Quran ever contradict Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. It seems as though this is an indication of Allah's mercy that He's given mankind Alhamdulillah. so many opportunities to implement His uh, wonderful way. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah.